Hello, my name is George Flowers. It is my honor and pleasure as chairman of your board of trustees to welcome you to the 56th annual meeting of the Historic Columbus Foundation. I will now officially call this meeting to order. On behalf of the staff and the board of directors, I wanna thank you for joining us virtually to celebrate the work that was done throughout 2021-2022. We are grateful and excited to share with you the great work and many accomplishments of your Historic Columbus team during this past year. As the pandemic era has ebbed, we have been able to tackle the project list in person with committees and board meetings returning to productive face-to-face -face meetings. All the while, your historic Columbus team has continued to produce phenomenal results. The historic Columbus staff has performed at the highest level during this past year. We are fortunate that we have a seasoned team executing the preservation strategic plan led by Executive Director Elizabeth Walden, who will deliver the historic Columbus year in review later on in this meeting. I want to offer a word of thanks to the executive committee for their hard work during this past year and for the leadership exhibited by John Scheftel, who has ably led this group during the first year of his second stint as president. We also are forever indebted to the service of our retiring board members, Elizabeth Clyatt, Tamara Flinoy, and Chris Harmon, who have all faithfully served and supported this organization. Thank you. For this new year, we are honored and excited to welcome our incoming directors and trustees and thank them for their willingness to serve. The new directors are Tom Bowden, Rinkish Patel, Renee Roth, and Bob C. Swift. And we have new trustees. They will be joining a larger class of returning trustees and their term will expire in 2025. Chance Chancellor, Elizabeth Clyatt, Barrett Feigner, Tamara Flinoy, Chris Harmon, Kelly Hicks, Becky Miller, Richard Peoples, and Kathy Williams. Lastly, I wanna say a word of thanks to our past president, Bob Kidd who sadly passed away in April of this year. Bob was a great architect, a devoted and involved community leader, and a superlative family man. Historic Columbus is truly indebted for his service to this organization through his thoughtful, enthusiastic, and dedicated leadership. We have and will continue to miss his guiding influence. We hope that you will join us in person at the Preservation Awards Ceremony that will be held in person at the National Infantry Museum World War II Company Street on October 20th at 5.30 p.m. You will not want to miss it as Historic Columbus will honor those who have led the way this past year in preservation excellence. We thank you, the loyal and dedicated volunteers, trustees, directors, preservationists, contributors, sponsors, and patrons for your continued support and guidance as we work together to make our community better. Without you, our historic Columbus Foundation would not be able to do the important work that it does. Next up in our virtual meeting is Cal Evans, who has faithfully served as the treasurer for Historic Columbus. Thank you, Cal. Thank you, George. Let me begin by saying that Historic Columbus ended the 2021-22 fiscal year with a surplus, marking the third consecutive year this has occurred. As you might recall, at this time last year, no one anticipated the economic volatility we have seen so far in the 2022 calendar year, particularly related to inflationary pressures. Given the conservative budget that we approved last year, the fact that our staff was able to manage operations in a manner that minimized growing expenses and met budget is impressive. 2022 also was the final transitional year in an effort modernizing our accounting and operational procedures. This year's audit noted no deficiencies of any sort, which is a meaningful tribute to the staff and also to the time and work from JPs who has shepherded us through that transition. Though the work of the staff and board is partially responsible for ending the year in the black, the real engine that drove the surplus in 2022 was, once again, the extreme generosity of our members. 
Let me highlight a few of the wins on the income side of the ledger. Annual fund donations beat budget by 18%. Membership dues did the same by 28%, and general donations exceeded our forecast number by a whopping 151%. Sustained results like this have put us in a position to embark on the largest project in the Foundation's history, the acquisition and redevelopment of Heritage Park and the Promenade in downtown Columbus. Elizabeth will go into much greater detail about the project in a moment, so I won't take up time with an overview. But I do want you, our supporters, to know that our staff and finance committee has spent a great amount of time on the financial due diligence required to take on a project of this size. We have analyzed the project on a multi-year basis, assuming a current cost estimate, as well as an estimate which includes an extra 20% related to unforeseen expenses. The latter scenario is the one that the Finance Committee has used in its impact analysis regarding the sources of funding for the project. I am extremely confident that the Foundation is in an excellent position to tackle the project and continue to operate as effectively as it currently does. I would like to thank the other members of the Finance Committee, J.P.'s, John Calhoun, George Flowers, John Sheftall, and Ed Adams for their contributions over the year and to the Heritage Park project in particular. To conclude this report, our fiscal year in numbers for 2022 are as follows. Total income, $595,487. Total expenses, $668,060. Transfers from restricted account, $105,882. Net income, $33,308. Surplus from 2021, $97,393. That gives us a carryover into 2022-23 of $130,701. The Finance Committee is again proposing a balanced budget for fiscal year 22-23. As always, the surest path to achieving that goal is continued enthusiastic engagement from our membership, board, and trustees, and we are counting on all of you to help us get there. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Executive Director Elizabeth Walden to give our year in review. Hello, everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us. We have come to the end of our 56th year as an organization. To echo George's remarks, we are very grateful to our directors, trustees, and members. We would not be where we are today without your leadership and confidence. I am also incredibly thankful to our three directors who are rotating off the board this year and for all they have done, Elizabeth Clyatt, Tamara Flournoy, and Chris Harmon. Their time and their support have been invaluable to crafting the preservation priorities of this organization. You will also see the handprints of our past president, Bob Kidd, throughout this year in review. His creativity and his voice have been deeply missed. However, we all remain confident he would continue to be proud of the work accomplished for our community. As Cal stated in his financial report, Historic Columbus has been incredibly blessed because of you, our membership. We need you to know Historic Columbus remains on sound financial footing to brace for the challenges 2023 may bring. We will also continue to stay very active in this coming year thanks to new education programs and great preservation projects that we are about to show you today. This past year, your love for historic preservation made a significant impact. More than $450,000 was invested for preservation projects and education programming thanks to your continued commitment and support. On the education side of our mission, we were approached by two organizations to create two new and exciting partnerships. First, the Rivertown Play is a new collaboration with Rick McKnight and Fab Arts. The play has been developed by professional storyteller Kathy Camerlin. It will be put in each third grade classroom this fall and will showcase our community's Native American history, the importance of the Chattahoochee River, Horace King's contributions, and our city's important industrial history. We are very thankful to Rick, Kathy, and Fab Arts for this new avenue to expand how our community's children learn about the history of their town. The second opportunity was presented by Norm Easterbrook and the River Center for the Performing Arts. Earlier this year, we developed a 20 panel exhibit called Lost Columbus that showcases the importance of preservation and reminds us that those important stories are not lost, even though the structures themselves are no longer standing. 
This has also served as a wonderful opportunity for Historic Columbus to reach a broader audience and highlight our town's history. The exhibit is located on the mezzanine level of River Center and will be there until December. I hope you all will stop by the exhibit when you are at one of those wonderful performances. We are also grateful that River Center wants to continue the partnership into 2023. There will be two more exhibitions created, one to celebrate our community's cultural arts history and the second to honor Columbus's industrial history and those who made it happen. These two new exhibits are also only possible thanks to a grant from the Columbus Cultural Arts Alliance, and we will keep you posted on when they are installed. Historic Columbus has also continued its investment in education through the Patricia Jackson Howard Scholarship, named in memory of our second executive director. The 29th Howard Scholarship was awarded in May to Columbus High School graduate Eli Hardigree, who is now attending the University of Georgia. To date, over $40,000 has been provided to graduating seniors in Patty's memory. Being proactive in finding new ways to share our community stories and advocating for the benefits that preservation tools can bring goes hand in hand with our current preservation projects. We reported last year on beginning the process to make Carver Heights a National Register Historic District. We were successful in receiving approval for the preliminary application from the State Preservation Office and Dr. Amanda Reese is completing the final application as we speak. It is our hope that it will be submitted by the end of the year. As the city's first post-war African-American suburb, the neighborhood will be Columbus's first African-American National Register Historic District. This designation will provide the ability for homeowners and commercial property owners to receive federal and state tax incentives to make needed renovation work more affordable. And that's what it's really all about, affordability. We continue to see that housing affordability is not just an issue for our nation's larger cities. It's widespread and it's here in Columbus. Historic preservation is one part of the solution. Like the federal and state tax incentives, Historic Columbus's facade loan and rehabilitation loan programs are another important tool that can help homeowners repair and renovate their historic homes. This past year, we provided four new loans for a total of $174,000 invested in our historic neighborhoods from the original city to North Highlands to Midtown. Since 1997, 250 loans have been made, representing over $2 million of total investment through these low interest loans. These loans are available to any homeowner of a property that is over 50 years old. You don't need to be within a historic district to qualify for them. We have the funds available to help put a new roof on your home, put a fresh coat of paint on the outside of your house, or provide funds for a full inside renovation. And we are so grateful to have a partner like NeighborWorks Columbus to provide all of the underwriting for them. Columbus is very fortunate to have a hardworking and creative housing authority and organizations like NeighborWorks, but they can't solve the affordable housing issue alone. In our country today, there are approximately 11 million renters who are burdened by their housing costs, meaning they spend more than 30% of their income on housing, some spending close to 50%. While 100,000 new units of affordable housing are developed each year, it would take 116 years to create enough affordable units to provide for those households currently in need. Historic preservation is one part of the solution. Our older blocks often offer more affordable housing options than newer areas of the city. 57% of housing units built before 1950 have a monthly housing cost of less than $1,000. At a time when cities are struggling with high costs of adding new affordable housing, making better use of the tremendous adaptive potential of our underused existing buildings is a proven way forward. And this is why neighborhoods like those in the Mill District, among others, are vital to Columbus's overall success. Historic Columbus made its first major investment in the Bradley Circle community in 2015 with the purchase of a property secured from the Columbus Land Bank Authority. Bradley Circle was developed in the early 1900s as workforce housing for the textile mills located in the area.
As the mills eventually slowed their production and work was moved out of the country, the houses and job market were left stagnant in many cases. But new life is finding its way into this small circular street within the larger neighborhood of City Village and the newly created Mill District. Since 2015, Historic Columbus, along with existing homeowners and other investors, have witnessed the potential and positive change occurring in Bradley Circle. To date, more than 11 houses have been purchased by various buyers and are either in the process of renovation or have been completed. These modest 1,000 square foot homes not only have affordability, they also have some of the best views our city has to offer overlooking the river. This summer, Historic Columbus closed on 2901 First Avenue with a new investor who is going to complete a wholesale renovation of the property. This home serves as the main entry point to Bradley Circle and will be a welcome new updated addition to the streetscape. Currently, Historic Columbus is working on a project with architect Jack Jenkins, contractor Tim Gregory, and property owner Mary Bradley in Bradley Circle, renovating a relocated shotgun house. The shotgun shuffle, as it has been named, due to shuffling the back bedroom to the side of the house, will be another project of Historic Columbus to help fill the gap where a Bradley Circle cottage once stood. When complete, the house will be listed for sale to put into sympathetic hands once again. Bradley Circle has certainly made some big strides in the last few years thanks to numerous preservation partners. Historic Columbus is excited to be a part of that effort as it continues to move forward in a big way. So you may be wondering why I'm not at the Rankin House this year. We began talking over a year ago about the hope of what will become Historic Columbus's largest ever revitalization project at Heritage Park and the Chattahoochee Promenade along the banks of the river in our original city. And since we're about to kick that off, it was the perfect place for me to be. The overall concept of this project is to revitalize the promenade and expand the history of our city told by moving the industrial history elements from Heritage Park to the promenade, along with creating a new history trail. Return the Heritage Park property to its original residential use and save five historic structures for them to become single family homes once again by moving them to the Heritage Park property. Three of these houses are coming from Lumpkin, Georgia in partnership with Historic Westville. We are grateful for their generosity to create a new chapter of life for these fabulous 1840s structures. We made the first public presentation to City Council in June and followed it with a public meeting and digital public survey to get input and reaction. The real estate agreement for the transfer of the Heritage Park property to HCF was unanimously approved by City Council in August, and once we close on the property, we will hit the ground running to begin the project. As we did at our June presentation to City Council, we also addressed the larger known concerns at the public meeting, controlling the quality of the renovation work for the five houses and limiting their use to single family homes, specifically restricting short-term rentals. A total of 96 surveys were completed. There were seven out of the 96 that included statements of wanting Heritage Park to remain as is or in some smaller scale. Historic Columbus's overall takeaways include ensuring a high quality of work for the renovation of the moved homes, to include deed restrictions, to eliminate Airbnb as a potential use, sharing all of our community's history within the new history trail, keeping the natural beauty of the promenade and maintaining the open green space, the importance of future maintenance for the promenade, keeping it walkable and creating a river view is important. From Historic Columbus's perspective, through the survey comments on social media and direct contact, there was not an overwhelmingly large voice to keep Heritage Park as it is, but an overall desire for the proposed plan to be thoughtful, mindful of future maintenance and to work. The ability to have this type of out-of-the-box idea nurtured would not have been possible without the creativity of your HCF Board of Directors and partnerships with Historic Westville and the City of Columbus. And most importantly, the ability to produce a revitalization project as significant as this one would not be possible without the Historic Columbus membership, the donors of the 2016 Save Me a Place capital campaign, Sarah Turner Butler's investment in the future of Historic Columbus, and the recent promised gift of $1 million from Mr. and Mrs. Clifford J. Swift III for this project. 
there will be a lot to share with you over the course of the next year as this project gets underway and this is going to be fun. The bottom line is and has always been about your passion for our places, your passion for our history, and your pa passion to improve our community. That is what we celebrate with these projects and that is what we will celebrate on Thursday, October 20th as we honor the incredible private investment of our 2022 Preservation Award recipients. Before I go, I want to take one more minute to thank the Historic Columbus staff. I am so fortunate to be able to work beside them each and every day. Walker Watkins, Debbie Lipscomb, Justin Krieg, and Palmer Colson, they are an incredible team. Thank you all for everything that you do for Historic Columbus and to make our community a better place. We are grateful. Now, it is my great pleasure to turn things over to our Director of Planning and Programs, Justin Krieg, to tell you more about this year's Preservation Awards. Thank you, Elizabeth. This year, we decided to change things up once again. The virtual program that you have seen tonight is all about what Historic Columbus has been able to accomplish thanks to you. This coming Thursday, October 20th, we get to celebrate in person with you to honor the recipients of the 56th Annual Preservation Awards. Historic Columbus is excited to award 18 properties with a 2022 Historic Columbus Preservation Award. These awards recognize individuals, businesses, and organizations who have completed a major historic rehabilitation, appropriate infill development, or program or exhibit related to our collective history in Columbus. These preservation warriors take on the long, hard, and in most cases, expensive task of preserving historic properties. Historic Columbus is fully aware of the challenges of this work and is compelled to recognize these efforts. Preserving our historic buildings and telling the stories of our people and places collectively help to remind us of where we come from and give us our sense of place as a community. These are the things that make our town unique, authentic, and interesting. Preservation is right at the center. That same evening, we will also present Historic Columbus's highest honor, the Sarah Turner Butler Heritage Award. This award has been given annually since 1984 to an individual or organization for outstanding contributions to historic preservation in our city and the region through demonstrated leadership and commitment to the mission of Historic Columbus. So please join us at the National Infantry Museum's World War II Company Street on Thursday, October 20th at 5.30 p.m. to honor the award recipients and their worthy projects. We hope to see you there. Thank you, Elizabeth and Justin. As most of you know, I'm John Shuftel, and I've been privileged to have served again as Historic Columbus's president this past year. And what a year. I'm very proud of the progress the foundation has made on a number of fronts, including most notably the Heritage Park Promenade Project. As I've said many times before, this project, which is the largest in scope and financial investment ever undertaken by Historic Columbus furthers three of our primary goals that comprise our mission statement and which are our reason for being. To revitalize Historic Columbus neighborhoods, to educate the public about local and regional history, and to preserve the historic, architectural, and cultural character of Columbus and its environs. I'm sure you can see without my having to state the obvious, why this is the perfect project for us in so many ways. But you don't need me to remind you that it has and continues to take investments of time and talent from our great staff, dedicated board members, and our entire membership to make this work possible. We're also grateful for the support from the original Heritage Park donors, from the Historic District Preservation Society, from Historic Westville, and certainly not last or least, from the city. As Elizabeth mentioned, following the legal transfer of Heritage Park from the city to Historic Columbus, work should begin quickly. Obviously, it'll be messy for a time, but before you know it, almost an entire block of the original city will be returned to single-family residential occupancy of five handsome homes dating from the 1830s to the 1880s. That is preserving architecture and revitalizing this part of the historic district as a single family neighborhood once again. And then the magic will begin on the promenade, 
redesigning and layout of the structures and artifacts currently housed in Heritage Park and surrounding them with updated and expanded history panels relating to Columbus. If that isn't better educating the public about our local and regional history, I don't know what is. So it's going to be an exciting year coming up. Stay tuned and check in often online at our great website or in person, once again, at the Rankin House. And in the meantime, come join us Thursday evening at 5.30 on the historic World War II Company Street behind the National Infantry Museum to inspect the fruits of our most recent $100,000 public participation grant and to celebrate the winners of this year's preservation awards, including the announcement of the 2022 winner of our highest honor, the Sarah Turner Butler Award. So we'll adjourn tonight and I hope to see you there on Thursday.